All right, what's up my AP Calc champions? In this problem, we're talking about spinning toys. All right, in this problem, we're, a company is designing spinning toys using the family of functions y equals c times x times the square root of four minus x squared, where c is a positive constant. Figure above shows the region in the first quadrant bound by the x-axis and the graph for some c. Each spinning toy is the shape of the solid generated when such a region is revolved around the x-axis. Both x and y are measured in inches. Find the area of the region in the first quadrant bound by the x-axis and the graph for c equals 6. There's a lot, a lot of information presented to us here, so let's go ahead and break down a little bit of it. This graph that we're shown here is y equals cx times 4 times the square root of 4 minus x squared. We know that we intercept the x-axis at 0, 0, and then some other point here. To find the area of the region, the first quadrant, that's, we're trying to find this area here. We're probably going to want to take an integral, okay? So we know it's gonna be from zero to, wait, do we know what our bounds are? Well, not really. What we need to do is we need to find where uh, y equals c times x times the square root of four minus x squares intercepts the x-axis again. Okay, so at this point, we know it's going to be some x, and we know that our y is going to be 0, because it's hitting the x-axis. So we can set this equation equals 0 and solve. So 0 is equal to c times x times 4 minus x squared. What x can we plug in to make all this equal 0? Well, if we just take a look at our square root. So what can we subtract from 4 to get 0, to take get the square root of 0? Well, we can plug in 2, right? So if we did if we did something like this, we're going to get c times 2 times the square root of 4 minus 4, which is 0. So this whole thing is going to be 0. So we know that we intersect our x-axis at 2, 0. So if we wanted to take the integral, our bounds would be from 0 to 2. And then we're just going to be taking the integral of our curve and we're also given that c is equal to 6 so we can go ahead and plug that in so 6 times x times square root of 4 minus x squared dx so now uh, we can go ahead and use u substitution to make this a little bit easier so under the square root we can set our u equal to 4 minus x squared so then we take the derivative with respect to x we're going to get minus 2x dx so then we can we can factor out our 6 because it's just a constant. And so now inside of our integral, we have x times the square root of 4 minus x squared dx. But we want something that looks like minus 2x dx. So we can go ahead and sub in our du for it. So what we're going to do is something a little tricky. is We're going to multiply by minus 1 half so that on the inside, we can have minus 2x, right? So this, what I'm basically doing here is I'm saying minus 2x times 2x is equal to x. So I'm just adding some more constants so that we can pattern match with our u substitution. So now on the outside, we've got minus 3, and then we have the integral. So we're going to have to change our bounds because now we're having it in terms of u. So we'll get back to that. But we can plug in, so now we have... This is going to be equal to our du, and then this is going to be equal, the inside of our square root is going to be equal to u, so we can rewrite this as the square root of u times du. And the bounds, we would just plug in, you know, 0 and 2 into our equation, u equals 4 minus x squared, so we can plug in u is equal to 4 minus 0 squared, so u is equal to 4 and then u is equal to 4 minus 2 squared, which is 0. So make sure you're actually substituting your bounds correctly. So in the bounds where we used to see a 0, we're now going to put a 4. And in the bounds where we used to see a 2, we're going to put in a 0. The reason why we have to switch up these bounds is because we're now integrating with respect to u and not x. So our bounds have to change. Make sure you're not messing up which one goes where you might just automatically autopilot to putting the zero on the bottom and the four up top, but that's not the case for this problem, okay? So then we go ahead and we can take the integral of this now that it's something a little bit simpler. 
can we write this as u to the one half power? So this is going to be minus three times two thirds u to the three halves, right? To the power rule for integration. And this is gonna be from four to zero. So then we go ahead and we plug in zero and four, this three and this three cancel out. So now we just have minus two, minus two times u to three halves. So we're gonna get minus two times zero to the three halves minus four to the three halves. So this is just gonna be a zero, four to the three halves. So a, a three halves power is basically you're just cubing it and then squaring it or you're doing the opposite, it doesn't really matter. So we can go ahead and just say, what is four cubed? That's 64. And then what's the square root of that? Square root of 64 is eight. This is a non-calculator problem, so make sure you know what these powers are. Okay, so minus two times negative eight, which is equal to 16. And if you wanted to, you could put units in this. It's measured in inches, so this would be in inches squared because it's an area. That's our final answer for part A. Kind of a lot you had to do there. Next problem. It's known that for this equation, the derivative is given here. For a particular spinning toy, the radius of the largest cross-sectional circular slice is 1.2 inches. What is the value of C for the spinning toy? In this case, we want to solve backwards a little bit. So it's being rotated around the x-axis, so it's gonna look something like, like this. And then, so we know at some point, we've got this cross-section that's circular, and the radius is 1.2. So when would the largest radius happen? Well, it would happen at a maximum on our equation, right? So we can figure that out by setting our derivative equal to zero. Because for any uh, maximum, the derivative should always be equal to zero. So we can set dy over dx equal to zero. So that's c times 4 minus 2x squared over the square root of 4 minus x squared. We can multiply both sides by the denominator, so that just goes away. So we get 0 equals c times 4 minus 2 to the x squared. And then we can divide both sides by c, so we get that 0 is equal to 4 minus 2x squared. So add 2x squared to both sides. 2x squared is equal to 4. x squared is equal to 2. Divide both sides by, by 2. And then we take the square root of both sides. So we get x is equal to the square root of 2. So it seems like the radius will be the largest when we're at x equals the square root of 2. And you could say, oh, well, what about this negative square root of 2? Well, remember that we're only looking at this from the bounds we're only looking at the in, in the first quadrant bound by the x-axis so we don't need to worry about that one Let me go ahead and cross that one out we have the x value for our equation we also have the y value that's gonna be 1.2 remember um so why does that make sense well the radius is going to be the height of the curve at that point it's going to be the tallest point so then we can just plug this into our equation. So 1.2 is equal to c times the square root of 2 times the square root of 4 minus the square root of 2 squared. Okay, do some more math. c times the square root of 2 times, so this is saying 4 minus the square root of 2 squared. So this would be 4 minus 2, so that would be 2. So then we get... 1.2 is equal to c times 2. So then we get c is equal to 1.2 divided by 2, which is equal to 0 0.6. So we have solved for our c here. Moving on to the next question. It says, for another spinning toy, the volume is 2 pi cubic inches. What is the value of c for this spinning toy? And I've included our, our radius again. So here we're given the volume. The volume is 2 pi cubic inches. And we can solve for the volume, you know, by adding up all these little cross sections inside of our spinning toy. 
So if you're thinking we should be doing an integral here, you're absolutely correct. We should be doing an integral, we're adding up the all of the areas of these little uh, circles. So that would be uh, the area of a circle is pi r squared. And we know that our radius is defined by the curve. Okay, so we can use that information to find the value of c. So we're saying that 2 pi should be equal to the addition of all of our, if we added up all of the areas of our circles under the curve. So once again, we're going from 0 to 2, because that's where we intercept the x-axis. Our equation is pi r squared, and remember we're using the curve as our r, so we can go ahead and plug that in cx times squared of 4 minus x squared squared dx and this should be equal to 2 pi so we can move our pi out here and then since we have a pi on both sides we can just get rid of them so we have 2 is equal to the integral from 0 to 2 of cx times 4 minus x squared the square root of that squared dx so now let's go ahead and keep simplifying stuff so let's go ahead and actually distribute the square so now we have c squared times x squared times 4 minus x squared, right? So you can kind of think of this as to the 1 half power, and then when you take something to the 1 half power squared, it kind of just like cancels each other out. So now we have this is equal to 2. So we can once again just move our c squared out to the front because it's a constant. And then continuing on, we can distribute our x squared by multiplying it by each of the values inside of our parentheses. So we get 2 is equal to c squared times the integral from 0 to 2, 4x squared minus x to the 4th dx. Parentheses, parentheses there. All right, and now this should be simple enough for us to actually integrate. So let's go ahead and do that. So we get 2 is equal to c squared times what is the integral of 4x squared? So 4x cubed divided by 3 minus x to the fifth divided by 5. So we're doing all of this from 0 to 2. We're going to just keep our c squared out front. We're going to plug in 2 and we're going to plug in 0. So we're going to get 4 times 2 cubed divided by 3 minus 2 to the fifth divided by 5. And all of this minus you know it doesn't even matter to like put zero here all, all of these are going to be zero so you might as well just like not include that so we still have our c squared out front so we get we have c squared times we got to do some simplification two cubed is eight eight times four is 32 so times 32 divided by three minus two to the fifth also 32 32 over five if we wanted to simplify this even more, we can multiply this by, we can have common denominators. So multiply this side by five and this side by three, 160 fiftieths minus 96 fifteenths, which is 64 fifteenths, still times c squared times c squared. So, and then still remember we have that two and we're solving for our c squared. Let's make sure we're not losing the plot here. So it's two is equal to 64 15th times c squared. We can multiply both sides by 15 64ths. So this would go away. Here we would get 30 64ths equals c squared. We can simplify that as 15 32nd is equal to c squared. We take the square root of both sides, so we get 15 32nd is equal to c. So now we have finally solved for our c after all of that work. <laughs> These no calculator problems are sometimes a bit, a bit much. Anyway, hopefully that helps you out with this AP calculus problem. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll get back to you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.